In this screencast, we're going to look at a concentric heat exchanger system that has lubricating oil that needs to be cooled by water. In this system, we're going to be given the outlet temperatures of both the oil and the water and the inlet temperatures of the oil and the water as well as the mass flow rate of the oil. And what we need to figure out is what is the mass flow rate of the water going to be to cool this oil by a specific amount. So let's start with drawing the picture. This is what's known as a concentric heat exchanger. What you have is an inner tube where a fluid flows. In this case, we're going to say that it's the oil. And then around it is another tube where another fluid flows. In this case, it's going to be water. We're going to consider this a counter current system where the oil and water flow in different directions. And so if our mass flow rate of our oil is 0 0.1 kilograms per second, what's the mass flow rate of the water have to be in order to achieve this outlet temperature of the oil of 55 degrees C? Heat exchangers are generally adiabatic, which means that all the heat that's lost by one of the fluids is gained by the other fluid. In other words, there is no heat loss to the surroundings. So our governing equation is going to be that the heat transfer rate, or Q dot, is equal to the mass flow rate of the fluid times the heat capacity of the fluid times the change in temperature. Because the, the system is adiabatic, what we can say is that the mass flow rate of the oil times its heat capacity times the difference in temperature coming out versus coming in has to equal the mass flow rate of the water times its heat capacity times the difference in temperature of the water. The heat capacities are values that can be looked up. And in this case, the heat capacity of the oil is 2,131 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And the heat capacity of the water is equal to 4,178 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. So let's set up this equation here and write it in terms of what we want to find, which is the mass flow rate of the water. So the mass flow rate of the water is going to be that mass flow rate of the oil times its heat capacity times the change in temperature. And this is going to be all divided by the heat capacity of the water times its change in temperature. And Let's fill in some numbers. And when we do the calculations, we find that the necessary mass flow rate of the water is 0 0.33 kilograms per second. Note that we didn't even have to calculate the heat transfer in this particular problem, but we easily could using either one of the fluids. 
So our Q dot will equal 9,590 joules per second. And just as a check, you might want to do the same thing for the water. And when we calculate this, we end up with 9,650 joules per second. So why is there a difference between the two? This kind of difference comes from rounding the numbers, in particular, this mass flow rate of the water.